into the teeth of a recession, which is exactly the wrong economic medicine to be deploying, to be deploying at this particular time. But the Conservatives say they'd go ahead with these cuts too. Well, I, I thought you managed to get David Mundell in your Sunday programme uh, to make a rather damaging admission because uh, hitherto, uh, the Tories have been arguing that their particular recipe for cuts would have protected health and education. And remember, when we're talking about Scottish public spending, we're not talking about things that you could cut, uh, like the ridiculous plan for identity cards and the billions that will cost, or the even more uh, dangerous plan for the renewal of Trident missiles and the many tens of billions that will cost, or for that matter, expenditure in Iraq. What you're talking about in Scottish public spending is health and education. Now, up until a few days ago, the Tories were saying that their plan for public spending cuts did not include health and education. Uh, David Mundell, no doubt, uh, confused by your astute questioning, rather let the cat out the bag. In which case, both the Conservatives and the Labour Party will answer for their policies at the coming electoral contest. Yeah, but the SNP isn't going to become the, the government of the UK. These cuts are going ahead. Isn't it therefore your responsibility as a devolved leader to get on and make the savings that are going to be necessary? Well, it's been our responsibility to pass the budget for the coming year. And incidentally, John Swinney is not the person trying to borrow £110,000 million. It's not John Swinney that's got his financial calculations wrong. We're not borrowing anything, as the earlier item in your programme indicated, in the Scottish Government. Our calculations, our, sum, our budgets have been absolutely on the button and correct. It's Alistair Darlings whose sums have been badly awry. And perhaps Alistair Darling should find the solution uh, to the financial deficit he now uh, assumes, as opposed to imposing on cuts in health and education in Scotland, Wales or Northern Ireland. Well, you seem to have Labour support now for borrowing powers at Holyrood. I'm not sure, though, how your meeting with Hillary Clinton tonight advances that particular cause. Uh, well, I'm glad we've got to Labour support, uh, as opposed to, what, two weeks ago in the Scottish Parliament, where they abstained on a, a Liberal Democrat motion, arguing for exactly that. So... The clarity that <laughs> was forthcoming from Andy Kerr uh, tonight is a newfound thing, but let's welcome it. Better one sinner repent of, perhaps. Uh, as far as the meeting with uh, the Secretary of State was concerned, uh, then it was an excellent meeting, a fulsome meeting, and about particularly uh, the drive to renewable marine energy in Scotland and how that compares with the elements of renewables in President Obama's uh, recovery strategy in the United States of America. It was a very cooperative meeting, I think very good news for Scotland and cements the friendship between Scotland and America. Well, uh, the State Department says that it was about uh, Scotland's contribution to America and your interest in their reflationary package. No note at all of talk of global warming. Well, we did talk about global warming and marine renewables. Uh, uh, Secretary of State Clinton was able to tell me about the difficulties they've had with deploying some of that technology in the Hudson River in, uh, in New York uh, State, which she's very familiar with, and the interest she's taken on the, uh, the success that we're having through the Saltar Prize and, and elsewhere in, in terms of Scotland. I mean, I note, for example, in President Obama's inaugural address, he said he was going to harness the power of the, the wind and the sun to repower America. I think that leaves the, the waves and the tides for Scotland, Glenn. First Minister Alex Salmond in Washington, thank you very much indeed for joining us. A great pleasure, thank you. Now, more bad news for Scottish media jobs today. The Daily